Hey guys, welcome back to Summer in the Songs. We are getting towards the end uh, of the summer. We're starting back regular Wednesday nights here pretty soon. So I hope you're getting excited about that. Keep in touch with the newsletter and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you on Sundays. We'll be able to kind of get you some information on what that's going to look like and um, got some new things going on this fall. So excited about those things. But for our purposes right now, we're going to be in Psalm 100. Uh, Psalm 100. So this is a psalm that I love and I've actually used um, quite a few times on Sunday mornings for a welcome or for a call to worship. Um, and it's pretty simple because that's exactly what it calls us to do. It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come into his presence with singing. Notice the psalmist does not simply say, make a joyful noise to the Lord, some people. Uh, make a joyful noise to the Lord, only the people that that saw God do a miracle or that maybe... Uh, have have really seen God do something special. No, no, no. He recognizes that all the earth should be praising the Lord because of who the Lord is. We usually think of praising the Lord for something He's done, and surely as Christians we have much to praise the Lord for because of what He has done for us. But the Psalms make clear that the number one reason that we make a joyful noise, that we worship the Lord, that we praise the Lord, is not first because of what he's done, but because of who he is. Who he is. That he is uh, completely worthy of our praise, honor, worship, of our lives because of who he is. He goes on to say, uh, come into his presence with singing. Verse 4 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. You know, oftentimes when I come into a worship moment or honestly, just when I start my day, you know, your whole life is worship. My whole life is an act of worship or an act of rebellion. And oftentimes in the morning, um, I read a verse like this and I think, you know, I just don't feel like it. I really don't feel like entering his gates with praise. Um, you know, again, the psalmist seems to think we don't we don't need a a primer we shouldn't need somebody to push our buttons we shouldn't need somebody to play our favorite song sing our favorite hymn uh, say our favorite verse give our favorite welcome uh, pick our favorite background right pick our favorite chairs have our favorite breakfast whatever it is we're all guilty of something every single one of us is guilty of thinking you know if they just would have done this i feel like it would have i would have been able to worship if that wasn't there, if that distraction wasn't there, if that wasn't going on, if they wouldn't have said that, if they wouldn't have sung that, then I, you know, I really felt like I would have been able to engage more. I would have been able to sing God's praises. And the psalmist does not give us that excuse. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. That from the moment that we awake and we enter into God's day for us, we enter into where he is and what he has for us, we are to be thanking and praising him because of who he is and for every single person that knows the Lord, what he's done for us. That there is no circumstance, there is no distraction, there is not one thing that happens to us in our life that the psalmist does not put under the umbrella of enter his gates with thanksgiving. So I pray that's a challenge for you this week. I love how this psalm ends it says the lord is good his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations that's a reminder the psalmist ends with a reminder you want to know why you enter his gates with thanksgiving you want to know why you enter his courts with praise you don't know why you shouldn't need a primer you don't know why you, no matter what your day looks like this is how it should start because the lord is good the lord is good that's who he is. The Lord is not good because he's done good things, although he has. The Lord is good because that's who the Lord is. The Lord is holy, not because he has set himself apart, but because that's who he is. His steadfast love endures forever and ever, and his faithfulness to all generations. That's what he does. That's what he does. He, he shares his love. 
right? He shares his love with his people, his faithfulness he shares to all generations, but he does those things as an outpouring of who he is, that he delights in doing those things. So let us praise the Lord as we start our days tomorrow. Let us praise the Lord as we uh, go to bed tonight. I have no idea what kind of day you've had. I know certain days are harder than others. Uh, Certainly certain days are the hardest of all the others. Uh, My encouragement to you is um, when you read a psalm like this, to be challenged and to be drawn to who God is, not just what he's done, because it can be so tempting when we're going through hard times to look at what he's done and go, well, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you accomplishing this for me? Why haven't you taken care of this problem? Why Why is this diagnosis come through? Why is this job not working out? Why are these people treating me this way? And we forget so quickly what God has first and foremost done for us in Christ, but also just forget who God is. That he is the shepherd of our souls. He knows our frame. He knows our lives. He knows what's going on. He is in control. Uh, every, pretty much every psalm before this, um, in Psalm in the 90s, he points out so clearly, the Lord reigns. He starts three or four psalms with that. Hey, the Lord reigns. He is in control. He is above all things. He is sovereign over every single thing that happens in your life. And that's good news because his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Love you guys. See you next week.